In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to use a rotary attachment under Ruby. I've done a number of videos on how to use the rotary attachment in job control, but seeing that Ruby now is the new software that we're selling with all the machines, then I guess it's time for me to do a couple of rotary attachments on using that software. It is a little bit different than using uh, job control. Um, the main process and the way we figure things out is the same, but again, there's a couple of different uh, functions, processes that are, that are in Ruby um, that weren't in job control. I'm going to do a couple of different videos. Again, the first one I'm going to start with is, is a Pilsner glass. I think this is, this is always the easiest type of glass to use this or a wine glass uh, or a, or a, you know, like a, uh, you know, like a shot glass or something like that, because it really doesn't have any markings on it. There's no, uh, I can put the image anywhere I want on the glass. I don't have to worry about a handle like I would have to worry about if I was working with a coffee mug or something like that. So a glass like this is, is really simple. And again, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use one logo on the glass, two logos and four logos. And you'll find that it's actually quite easy to set up in Ruby. Um, but again, we just need to sort of, you know, go through a couple of, you know, the, the, the proper steps to, to be able to get the images in the right location. The other thing I'm going to talk about uh, in this video and, and what I like to talk about in all videos is sort of also to give you the process. You know, I know there's a lot of people that are sort of, you know, saving template jobs and they're giving them to their, their employees to run them. So again, you know, we have to have a, a standard way of how we process logos so that when our when somebody's using the laser they aren't going to make any mistakes there and they basically just have to load up the template job put the logo in the right location know that they're using the right glass and then press the start button and again i'll try to go through a, a few tips that that i use when i'm teaching people how to use a rotary attachment so that when they go to use do another job six months down the road or a year down the road, it's very easy for them to open up that template job and then put the logos, logo or logos in the right location and then be able to give their customer the type of product that they're looking for and do it fast and do it quickly and do it for a low price. So let's get on with the video. Again, hopefully you'll learn something today. And like I said before, we'll be doing some other videos. So once you watch this one, uh, there will be a couple more that come up. Uh, certainly I'll be doing one on, on the Yeti mug too, because again, uh, that requires, you know, a proper placement and proper starting points, you know, when we, we're working with the glass. So let's get on with it. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Points to remember on the rotary. First, circumference is measured by the diameter times pi, or in this, in this tutorial, 3.3 times 3.14, which equals 10.362, or rounded off 10.4 inches for the circumference. 10.4 represents the full wrap of the round item. Number two, when measuring the diameter of the round item, it is best to use a good ruler or a caliper. A caliper is good if you have a tapered glass as measuring at the top of the round item may not give an accurate measurement due to the curvature of the glass. When measuring the circumference, I always find a good seamstress tape measure is the best. Make sure the laser machine power is off before you plug in or remove the plug on the rotary. This can stop the destruction of the driver board and the machine. Keep the logo away from the lip of the glass as this can cause irritated lips. And the last point is have a good small level to check that your glass is level. Before we take a look at how to use the rotary attachment in Ruby, there's a couple of things I like to do uh, before we get started testing. One is to make sure that I've got a half decent material setting, and the other one is just to create a test file. Let's take a look at how to see what settings we have uh, available in the material database by default. Um, again, I like to use mask, a masking on, on, uh, on the glass or maybe a, a wet newspaper. Um, and 
my power and speeds normally for that would be something in 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 uh, 100 power 70 speed um, and I am using a Pilsner glass so again I want to have a glass setting that that I can that has those settings in it that I can save with the test file so let's go take a look at what we've got in the material database to access the material database all we need to do is to go up to the three dashes in the top left hand corner here click on them go down to materials click on the materials and we're in the material database now again you have a number of different materials that are loaded by default when you install the software you can see that I got a couple of glass material setups here one is for crystal and one is for industrial so let's just check and see what those are normally I like to use somewhere around 100 power and 70 speed I'm working typically with a mask or maybe wet newspaper uh, more a mask so uh, normally the 70 speed and the 100 power and an 80 watt system typically works fine so let's take a look at what the glass crystal does uh, it's 34 power and it's 100 speed so again I need to change the speed for for the crystal um, and again you have a couple of options here I could just change the power here and save it um, and then now I've actually got uh, settings so I could come in here and say 100 power and 70 speed and I could save the setting and now that setting is saved um, however let's let's just see what the industrial has and again it's 65 power which is no good so I'm going to create a, a, a material setting right from scratch which is fairly straightforward we're going to click on the three dots here I'm going to say add new material and let's call that standard glass And again, we could add a tag in here if you want. Again, tags are, are quite useful for searching. Um, you know, this could be something like uh, maybe it's a, um, you know, maybe we're using a two-inch lens. So again, maybe that's a tag we want to use, and maybe we might want to have something like a G um, three, four, five, six, which maybe is the order number, or maybe it's a. Uh, Maybe, uh, maybe a part number or, or, or even we could use a supplier like we might say this is uh, you know um, XYZ uh, company because maybe we have two different glasses that are from different suppliers and we have different settings so again sometimes this is fairly useful to have the have a, a tag that allows us just to search for XYZ so that would pull up all the presets that we've got for that for that company uh, I'm going to come down here. Um, I do have red in here. I'm, um, again, I'm not cutting any glass. You can't cut glass with the machine. Um, and again, um, so uh, you could score it if you want, but I'm, I'm going to get rid of it anyways. I'm going to click on the dots here and delete. And again, uh, just to do a quick, we'll just do a quick save here. You can see we've got the standard glass setting here. Uh, and the only other thing I want to do is change this to power is going to be 100 and the speed is going to be 70. I've got the DPI is 500 which is what I'm going to use. I'm going to go to the advanced setting here. Um, not a big fan of bottom up engraving. I use top down. Uh, don't want pressurized air. We want that off. Uh, standard engraving mode uh, and again everything is good there. So let's close that down and let's save it. And now I've got a setting for my standard glass. Now, the only other thing you may want to do before you actually um, go and produce uh, and, 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 and get out of the material setting is that we can actually call this a favorite. And we can assign a favorite setting to that. And maybe we're doing glass all the time and we want that setting to come up into the material setting uh, in the prepare screen. Um, and so some, if we do hit the favorite, then now that glass is, is now set to favorite so that when I go into the prepare screen I want to assign the material setting uh, you'll see that glass will be always right there for us to access so again if I click up here into the prepare screen 
And notice now that I've actually got a my logo here. Um, I'm just set up on a flat table. You'll notice here that my presets are not right and I don't have a, a name f yet for the actual uh, test file. So let's put a name in here. Let's call it uh, Pilsner Glass. One logo. And uh, let's say template. Now again, we, we again we could use tags here. Again, the tags could be you know maybe it's a, a you know a certain supplier, uh, maybe it's a it's an order number. Um, but again, you know we can put some tags in there. Again, we maybe we'll put in that G three four five six, which is kind of a, a setting that that uh, you know for for the actual order number for the glass that we're going to be putting in there. Uh, again, if we come down here to the material setting, you'll notice here now that I have the favorite set right here. So I don't have to go searching for the setting. It's already there. So I just click on the standard glass and you'll notice here that all my settings are set properly. Uh, 70 power, 100, uh, 100 power, 70 speed and uh, top down and no, no air assist. Well, again, I'm all ready to go. I can come up here and save that setting. And now you can see that I've got a setting for the, uh, the glass itself. Now for the template file, all I need to do is just save the rotary attachment function with the template file. And I can do that by just clicking the rotary function here on the menu bar. Turn off the 3D. And let's bring my logo down somewhere close. And we can then come if we want and save the job. And you can see now that the job has actually changed over here. You can see that you have the red line. We've got a shaded area here, which indicates now that we're using the rotary attachment because that's totally different than, than a save file. The one nice thing to, to notice about the rotary attachment uh, as it's hooked up here in, in, um, in as you can see that we have an X value here. Our Y value is zero. Um, because basically the Y is disabled. Okay, so the Y is normally the up and down measurement and the X is the left to right measurement. The Z is what we would use when we want to do a focus and we want to drive the table up or down. That value comes up. Right now it's at its lowest point, which is minus 7.79. Again, if you want, you can move this along the axis, the red line here is the red dot pointer that's listed you know in the machine and it travels right along the middle of the actual rotary attachment itself now again if you want you can move this by hand as i said you can actually use the x number right here so again the next x number here i could type that in as being let's say for example that we want that to be at 22.5 so again, that moves it. The anchor point is the left here. If I want to work from the middle, again, I could make that 23. Or if I want to work from the far right, which is this anchor point right here, then basically I can, you can see how that number has changed. The, the, the logo hasn't moved. What's moved is just the way we measure it, which is at the right side. And again, I could come in here and type that in if I want that to say be 23.6. And again, that movement is there. If I want to bring it back, I could maybe make this uh, 25. And again, that'll come back. So again, <clears throat> these anchor points are quite important and they will help us out in terms of us moving left or right. The other thing that typically I like to do uh, when I'm actually setting the job up is I like to, I always, you always have to do a manual focus in with the rotary attachment. You can't do autofocus. It's just going to run into too many problems. Um, trust me, after 30 plus years and selling lasers machines, I can tell you right now the worst thing you can do is jam a head into the material or the table. And that typically happens because you're using autofocus. Um, manual focus is always the way that I, I use it. It takes a couple extra seconds, but it's certainly a lot uh, better. Now, if I drive the table up, it's 
So let's drive the table up. And minus 5.48 is going to be my Z value for I'm in focus. So right now, if you take a look at the image in the bar right here, I'm actually in focus with the focus tool on. Now, as a lot of you would already know, is that if you keep on going, the focus tool is going to fall off the, the ledge, um, and then it's going to go underneath the rotary attachment or something like that. So typically what I do is I actually record the five, the MIS 5.48, because if I want to, to do the same glass in at six months, I don't have to use the focus tool. I can just drive the table up until I actually get to this value right here. And again, that's quite easy to do. So if I move the table down a little bit, you notice that the number will start to increase. And all I really need to do is to bring that back up again until I get to 5.48. And I'm ready to go. So for me, this is a lot faster. I don't have to worry about trying to find my focus tool and I don't have to worry about it falling off or anything like that. So again, for me, this is quite a, quite a positive uh, feature of the, of the machine that makes it very easy when we want to redo this job later on. So there's a couple of other things that I'll typically do when I'm actually working and setting a template up, especially with a the glass. There's a couple of other things I like to bring in. Uh, one is the way the rotary is set up in the laser machine and also maybe a, uh, a picture of the actual glass that I'm working on. So uh, again, I have these saved already. They're saved as designs, not as a job. So I'm going to click on designs here on the right. And again, I've got, this is the rotary attachment. And you notice that this is the way that the glass is sitting in my on my table with the cones with the cones facing the way they are uh, that I want the glass to be mounted in. You notice that the top of the glass is on the left and the left side of my logo is the top of the logo. So again if I was going to superimpose this over here I'd have something like this. So again that's sitting on top and it's something like this. So again, I like to sort of have that there. Just remember that if I zoom in on this, this red line, which is a red dot pointer, is going right through the middle of the rotary attachment. Okay, and this is the big difference between job control and, and Ruby is that this red line isn't there in job control. In Ruby, it's there because I think the problem was is that when the reason they did this was because it was always a bit of a people kind of got confused. You know, they'd send a job over that was kind of this size and the, the, the rotary attachment would turn a certain amount before they got to the glass and it was kind of confusing. This way, you know that the, the red dot pointer is in the middle of the, of the job uh, and then half of it's this way, half of it's that way. And when it starts turning, it's going to go, in the case here, we're, we're graving from the top down. It's going to start from here and then move down to here. So I think it's a lot easier for people to kind of understand where this is going to start. In job control, I would have brought this right up here, and then the image would have started engraving right away at the top here. So again, a little bit of a different way of setup. Um, and this is quite nice uh, for, for this type of a setup. Uh, again, uh, what I'm going to do here... Uh, again, I, I'm going to use this as a visual cue, so it's, it's more for the operator, or it's for you the next time you go to the, do the job. Um, again, if you if you were if I wanted to to bring up the backside here to to make this more even uh, and use the angle bracket, then I may turn my cones, mount the cone on the right and the and the holding bracket on the left. Uh, but again, uh, I'm going to do it like this because this is the way that's in the system right now. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this red. And the reason that I'm going to make this red is because I want to use this as a visual cue, but I don't want it to laser engrave. So this makes it very easy for you or the operator, whoever, is coming in and going, oh, the rotary attachment is mounted this way, not the other way that it's on there right now. And it, it makes it easier for them to, to, to do a template file, uh, and they don't have to really think about anything. 
The other thing that you may want to bring in is, again, here we've got the, 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 the picture of the glass. And again, I've got G3456 because I'm just assuming that maybe this is the order number. So the other thing now is the operator can take a look and say, oh, it's supposed to be this glass because maybe we've got three or four different Pilsner glasses. And this way, uh, maybe if the number, if, if we don't have the G3456 in, in the name up here, which maybe we would put in, uh, again, if you want, you could do that. You could say G3456, and that's all part of the file name. But it's also right here as a visual cue for them. And again, I want to make this red, so I'm going to click on the Edit button right here. And I'm going to assign this as red. I'm going to Update. And now I've got a couple of visual cues. So I could actually have a third one if I wanted to, which would be I would actually then put a number in here that would say Z equals Miss 548. And again, that's something that maybe, uh, um, you know, you can put that in now or, or again, uh, we could do that later on. I, I could I could come in here if I wanted to and I could come into the bottom here. Uh, and then what we could do is we could just come in here and then I could come in and put in here and say uh, Z, you know, equals minus 5.48. Bring this up here. I'll make that red. And then I'll save the job. And then I can, you can see that I now added the Z equals minus 5.48. So now what I can do is I can actually take this job. I can save it and I'm ready to go. So now that we've got our visual cues laid out here and we've got our template file saved. Now we can actually set up our, our glass logo. Again, this plus right here, you notice as I move my cursor closer here, it actually selects. That's the red dot pointer. And again, you can see here that that location is on the top of the glass where I want it to go. So normally what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press the F8 key. And what that creates as a marker. You can see how the plus symbol got bigger uh, here because it's actually the marker is going exactly where the red dot pointer is. So if I move my laser head and let's assume that I want to go maybe right to there. Let's go a little bit farther. Let's assume that's the, the extremity of the, of the logo I want to work with. And again, I'm going to press an F8 key here. And now I've got two markers. And again, if I move my laser head to the right a little bit, you can see it coming out. And if I move my logo out of the way, you can see now this, this area here is basically the area that I want to put my logo in. Now, you'll also notice that on the right here is the actual size of the logo, and here it's the location. Now, again, if we want to work from the middle, we can actually select the middle anchor point here, which again is that X right there. Now, what I want to do here is I want to take this image, and I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to bring this up here and let's zoom in here and you'll notice that there's my marker there and there's my marker there. So I can make this logo a little bit bigger and I can do that either by dragging the selection handles here. Let's assume that it's a little bit too big and then I can say, OK, well, let's snap this back here. I know that this middle is 70 or 20 point. 779 and my size of my uh, logo is 2.038 by 1.9 again maybe this is supposed to, let's say this is going to be two inch that's our maximum area again that's a little bit bigger so let's go a little bit smaller and again now i'm working within that area there so again the the thing to remember here is that these markers are very good because they give us the location of how big our area can be. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, you could if you, you could if we wanted to put a rectangle there in. If we wanted to sort of 
allow us to, to size for the up in the top area here. But that allows us to sort of get this location in. And I know now that the maximum width of my logo is 2.034. Maybe you might say 2 inches. Uh, we make that our maximum area. Again, you could put 2 inches in, the, in some place on the plate just so that the operator again knows that the maximum size for that an image for that glass is 2.034 inches or 2 inches or whatever you want to set up. Just remember as a, as a food for thought, I normally like to keep the logos a little bit away from the top of the glass because the last thing you want to do is have somebody drinking out of the glass and the logo is too close to the, to the edge, to the lip of the glass. So try to keep it down a little bit more to the body so that it's away from the drinking area. So again, this is our one-sided logo and I'm ready to go. So when it starts to laser engrave, it's going to rotate and do the top of the logo and then process all the way through to the bottom logo. As I mentioned in the, in the introduction, this is a great glass to work with because I'm not worrying about handles or anything like that. It doesn't really matter where this logo goes on the glass as long as it's within uh, an area that is in focus uh, and is the size I want, then I'm going to be good to go. I can now save the logo and the markers in the template file, which will be saved with the job. And the next time that I open up this template job, the markers and the logo will come back with the job. I think for a lot of people, uh, when they're first using the rotary attachment, it can be very intimidating. Um, and I probably didn't want to spend too much time on talking about uh, diameter and circumference and things like that and how it relates to to the rotary attachment. I think it's important because I think a lot of a lot of times most of us are are so used to working on flat surfaces that when we have to use a rotary, it takes us a little bit of time to sort of you know get the feel for how we locate logos and text and that on the round items that we're looking to engrave. I've got a job set up here in Corel Draw, and the one thing you'll notice in Corel Draw is that I've created, I've got a, a diameter of a mug, or in this case, the glass that we'll be using, which is 3.30 inches in diameter. Now our formula is the diameter times pi, which equals the circumference. So in this case, our diameter is 3.30 inches times pi, which is 3.14 which equals the circumference, which is 10.4. Now you'll notice here that I've got the logos laid out on the page. The thing to, that we really need to understand is that the page and our round object, when we flatten it out, so if we took a mug like this, and then we sort of cut it in half, and then we laid it flat on the, on the table, <coughs> The circumference of that glass uh, is the size of the page that I have pictured in Corel right now, which is 10.4 inches in length. And you can see what I've done with the paper here is I've actually superimposed it on the glass. And I've got a logo printed on one side and a logo printed on the other side, and they both match up. And that's really what we're doing here in, in Corel Draw. And this is basically what the rotary attachment does. As long as we put in the appropriate diameter, the software is going to automatically figure out what the circumference is, and then it's going to put the logos in the appropriate places on that round item. The, the only thing you need to understand is that you need to put the proper diameter in the glass of the glass in in the software, in this case, Ruby. 
So what we've got is I've actually, I printed out a flat piece of paper like we have right here. And all we're really doing with that is we're turning it like this. Now I've cut this one down, but that's really all we're doing. So again, you know, if this represented the 10.4, then when I put the two pieces together, that's sort of what we're going to have. And that's very important and it's very, very easy to relate to this once we've done it a few times. And hopefully as I explain it, you'll get a better understanding of what we're doing here. You can see that I've got the logo uh, at 3.9 inches on the page in the middle. And that relates to 10.4, which is the circumference divided by four. So I've got four quadrants and then I've added uh, one half of that quadrant, which in this case is 2.6 divided by two, which is 1.3. So 2.6 plus 1.3 is 3.9. The other logo, so it matches up perfectly, is going to be located at 9.1 inches on the middle or, or uh, middle anchor. And you can see that if I take the distance between the middles, of the 3.9 and the 9.1, I've got 5.2. If I go from the middle of the far right logo, which in this case is 1.3 inches, and then I proceed to go to the to the other side and I come back into the, the first logo, it's actually 3.9 and it adds up to 5.2. So I've got two logos on center that are should be exactly across from each other, as long as I've got the page width, or it, or in the case of a rotary attachment, the, the page height, uh, properly done. Okay, so I hope this sort of makes it a little bit easier for you when you're trying to understand how the rotary works. And once you understand that 3.3 equals the page height, uh, which in this case is 10.4, I think for a lot of people it becomes a lot easier. I know for myself it comes a lot easier. Uh, for figuring things out and again we you know we had to do this a little bit more in job control it's a little bit easier uh, when you, we go through uh, Ruby and how we set two logos up uh, on a Pilsner glass um, it will be a lot easier but again understanding the principles here I think goes a long way so that when we do get into the Eddie mugs and everything you'll have a better understanding um, how we, this relates to working with handles and, and things like that. So I've got my job loaded on here. The only really thing I need, the only other thing I really need to do is to make sure that I'm going to save this job here. And you notice that it's Pilsner Glass 1 logo and the name is here. Now again, I'm going to save this as a 2 logo because now I'm going to actually do a logo with 2. And this is quite easy to do in Ruby uh, because all I really need to do is duplicate this and it's very easy to locate it in the case of this type of a glass. Again, I'm going to have a two-sided logo here, and I'm going to say Save as New. And now I've actually got the two logo here. So I've got a one logo and a two logo. And all I'm going to do here is this is going to stay the same size. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to say I'm going to select the logo. I'm going to go Control C and then Control V. And I've got my second logo. So all I need to do with this logo here is bring it down to the bottom. And I want half of it on one side and half on the other side. So you can see the other half is here, and that's the protruding bottom here. And then this is the, the top here, and it will traverse right down here, uh, and then finish the logo off that way. So but I'm going to select this logo. I've got the middle anchor point set. You notice here it's 20.77. Then I can type in 20.77 and you'll notice that the logo matches up with the original one. It's important to remember that we get perfect lineup with our two logos when we put in the appropriate diameter of the, logo, of the glass that we're working with. If you don't put in the proper diameter, you're going to be in trouble. Now, all I need to do is just save this setup 
and I've got a template set for two logo Pilsner glass. I can just go over and click the save button and now I've got my, my uh, two logo glass saved. Okay, so what about if we wanted to do a four logos instead of the two logos? We'll put a logo right here, and we'll put a logo right here. And that's quite easy to do. It takes a little bit more figuring out, but it's pretty simple. Uh, so all you need to do is have the, the uh, calculator app going. We're just going to clear everything here. And we know that our mug is 3.30. And we're going to times that by pi, which is 3.14. So our glass is 7 or 10.362 inches. And all we need to do is divide that by 4. And we know that our setting has to be 2.59. I normally just use, in this case here, we're going to use 2.6. And that makes it quite easy to, to set our position. So all I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to take the logo here. I'm going to go Control-C, Control-V. And again, I'm going to move this over here, and I want it to be somewhere in the middle. Now, you notice here that I've actually got a number here, minus 2.662. Um, and again, if we go back to our calculator, you notice that it was 2.6. So I'm pretty close, and to tell you the truth, nobody's probably ever going to notice this. But let's, let's try to make this a little bit more exact, so we can select this, and we can take off that and I press the enter key and our image goes off somewhere else so again that's a problem and there's a bit of a bug here so we're gonna have to sort of work around that and that's pretty easy to do so all you need to do is to take the image I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here remember that our logo is 20.777 so I need to move this to minus 2.66 gonna come down a little bit so I'm dragging my mouse and that's very close probably going to be good there and again you notice that it's 20.77 which is what this is here so again I can do now and zoom out I can go control C and V and what I can do is move the next image down and this one is going to be in the same location in terms of our number. We want it to be 2.6. I'm going to zoom in on here. I'm going to move this till it's close to 2.6. It's pretty close. And again, that's 20.77. So now all my logos are in a row. And now I can engrave this job so that we actually have four uh, images going all the way around the around the glass um, and you can see by the picture here that I've actually done it I'm not done it on the glass but I did it on a Yeti style mug and you can see that I've got perfect good position all the way around the mug uh, so again I'm working around a, a little bit of a bug but again it's not that critical that I that it's really going to affect me in terms of my setup now the only other thing you're going to do here is you're going to come across and you're going to go file save as new uh, but first we want to just put in four because it's a four-sided logo and then I want to say save as new and now you can see that I've got four I've got three different logos one with a one logo 
one job with two logos, and one job with four logos. And again, everything is set here, and we're ready to go. Um, and again, I only really need, again, I can only set my markers in, the, in this case with the red dot pointer, anything that's along the red line. But realistically, um, you know, I can come in here and I, again, I could put another number in here and I could say that the distance, let's say we, we didn't want to edit this. Uh, let's come in here and let's put a, a, another piece of text in here. And maybe we say um, that the, the distance... is two point six make that a bit smaller it's in there make it red update the job and you can see now the distance for here is 2.6. And again, I could maybe put some text here that says 2.6 and 2.6. This one's easy to do, and this one's easy to do. But again, we can save these, and, and we know that the, the size of our logo is 2.034 with 1.93. Might some, need something a little bit easier, such as 2 inches or 2.1 or something like that. But that's really all the operator needs to know. They need to know the size of the logo and the location that these are going to be sitting in. So it's quite easy for us to set this up and to be able to do our location. So again, if I pick the center anchor point, you can see I'm pretty 2.6 and 2.6 minus 2.6. And then again, I have the two here like I normally would for, for two sided. We'll get into looking at a, few, a little bit more of a complicated setup with the, with the glasses when I get into doing Yeti mugs or we get some, something with a handle or maybe something with a logo on it. Uh, and again, we have to, we have to sort of match up the, the, the image, of, you know, across on the logo or on the other side of the logo or something like that. But this is pretty straightforward and very easy to, to do. So that's basically how we would do a simple uh, glass setup with a, with a rotary, rotary attachment in Ruby. Fairly straightforward, quite easy. Uh, hopefully they'll fix the, the issue I had uh, in, a, in, a, in a new release. Uh, but again, it's something that's easy for us to overcome. In my previous example, where I was using the four logos on the, the glass, the problem with that is it's a bit of what I call hunt and peck. And basically what that means is, is that we're sort of moving things and, and, and it's great for the job that we're doing, but we really want to have something that's a little bit more permanent and a little bit easier for our artwork to snap to the appropriate location. Now, in the example here, you'll remember that I had a marker here and I had a marker here that indicated the overall size of the logo. The other thing I would really want to do here is put a marker here so that it's right in the middle of these two locations. So when I snap the logo to the job, it goes right to the middle. And then I can leave that marker there. And I really don't even have to save the, the logo with the file, other than it's good to have it as a placeholder. So if I turn on my machine out of suspend mode here right now, I can bring my my marker over here and if I press the F8 key you notice that I I now have a marker as I had before with the other two markers here I'm gonna move that out of the way and if I select that marker I can make that in this case here 2.77 Certainly it would be easier if we did something like 2.7 or 2.8, but this is fine like that. Now you notice that that marker now is right at the 2.7, 20.77 inch mark. So I can take my logo now and I can move it and it'll snap right to the, 
So you can see now that I've got 20.77 20 already set up. Now, the problem that we have in Ruby uh, that we didn't have in job control was that I could theoretically move the, the red dot pointer all over this, all over the page. I can't do that in Ruby. That red dot pointer is, is stationary fixed to the red line. So you can see that if I come to the machine and I try to move the glass around so the red dot pointer moves, it doesn't move. It's stationary on the red line. So I can't move my red dot pointer up to here to put a marker. But I can move, I can put a marker here. So I'm going to press F8. And then if I want, I can actually move marker here. And then let's zoom in on this. And we can move this so we get to... 2.6 and the easiest thing here is just to keep on zooming in so I get myself up to about 4500 and I can move this still keep going up and this should be 2.6 and if I zoom in it makes it easier for me to get to that whoops that 26.00 location you notice here that the numbers out a little bit here so I can take this and I can go back to 20.77 and I'm in the right location so now if I click on here I can take this logo and I can go and control C and control V and I can move this till it snaps and you notice that's 20.77 and I would do this again down here I'll put a marker here and I would put a marker here again if I if I want I can come over here and I can press F8 again and I can move this out of the way and that needs to be at 5.184 Everything is set here. So my marker is there. I can take my job, snap it, to 20.77. And then if I come here, and I press F8 again, I can bring that close to where I need to be zoom in so I want to be at 20.6 and that's going to be 20.77 so if I zoom back out again take this logo here control C V and I can snap that down to here now if I do that let's zoom in in here so now I've got my four logos here and they're everything set up now again the nice thing about the doing it this way is that I can just leave the I can take all the logos out and just leave the markers there and the markers then become our center point for all the logos and normally when we're working on rotary items we're normally working from the middle we're not working from the top left hand corner or anything like that we're normally working from the middle that's not to say that we couldn't put a marker that we set for the uh, for the middle uh, for the sorry for the top left hand corner or the bottom right hand corner but normally on a rotary type item like this we're working from the middle 
So again, I can I can then just if I want I can put a note in my job and just say that it's you know I'm saving to the center of the of of the uh, of the marker, and I can theoretically come in here and delete all these out if I want. Something like this, and now I just have the markers as my designator for my job. Now again, I always like to have at least one logo there because again it's it's nice because as you as you can see it sort of gives the the operator or you if you're saving these it gives you kind of a you know a sort of a you know an, a, a way of looking at it and getting a perception as to how big the logo is but I can I can save this as one job now I don't have to save it as three separate jobs I can save it as one job and then I can just put the logo wherever I want so if I'm doing a one logo job then I would just leave, I would put the logo right here. If I was doing a two logo job, then I just duplicate this. And then I can just snap that right down to the bottom here. And, and now I'm actually, I actually have the ability to now have two logos very quickly and I'm just using the marker as my designator. And then I could do one for here and one for here and now I've got four logos. I could have a marker, two markers here and two markers up here, and then I can do six six logos across if I want. So then that's a nice thing about having it set up like this because now I can the marker allows me for perfect placement. Again, you can use the sort of the eyeball method of just sort of trying to find the, the proper location. Um, you know, and again, you know, this using the anchor points here, everything is 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 a very good way of being able to get the appropriate location and using this for our size is 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 perfect for for what we want to do. But again, the nice thing about it about this type of setup is I don't need three jobs or four jobs. I just need one job, and then I just bring the appropriate logos in that I need and put them at the appropriate location. And I'm using the markers to, to direct that location for me. So now all I need to do is just come in here, save the job. I can bring another job in if I want, and I can go back to this job, and you can see that everything is saved. So again, it's a quick way of being able to bring a job back in and then using the markers as my save location. Just remember when you're when you're doing this that you put enough information in the file itself so that when you bring it back up again in six months or a year or whenever, or you have an operator doing it, um, and we all know that operators change fairly quickly sometimes, that they have some way of, of having the appropriate information there. Because we don't want to, you know, have them start doing things and, and start doing them wrong. You know, we want to open up the job, do the job, and then get on to the next job. And the more information that's in here, the better it is for them to pick the right product, make sure that everything's orientated right, and then put the appropriate power or speed in, in there to get the appropriate look, good looking image, and then off we go. One of the other things that I talk a lot about uh, when I'm teaching people on how to use the rotary is, is look at the actual setup of the actual round item that we're working on. You can see that the, the image right now on the screen is my glass setup and the rotary attachment. You'll notice that the head is off to the right, even though the engraving is off to the left. And the reason for that is that Normally, I want to get the head out of the way so that I can release the glass easily out of the holder and then put another glass in. Typically, this is achieved by putting the head, you know, either to the left or the right uh, so that I can release that, uh, that glass and then pop another one in very quickly. One thing we have to do in the software, though, is we have to tell the machine to go back to the starting position. Because normally I'm not just doing one glass, I might be doing 30. So I may start at this location, but I need it to tell the machine that I need to go back to the starting position. And that's easy to do. All I need to do is to come up here into the three lines here, click on that, 
and then go down to the settings menu here. So save the job. And we're going to go to the device. And I'm going to go to the home position. And the home position for me is going to be the start position. Not the zero, zero. I don't want it to go back to the top left hand corner. Sorry. It could be a custom value or the start position. Start position I like because it just goes right back to, to where I started to and I can remove that glass very easily. So let's leave it at the start position. If I had it changed it and then gone back to the start, I would have to save it. And then we will go back to the repair screen. And then I'm going to push this to the laser. And then I'm going to run it. So you can see that the engraving is being done and it's counting down. And when that job's done, then the red dot pointer, the laser head will go back to the starting position, which is, in, which is in the right side of the actual holder itself. There are a couple of other things that uh, we can take a look at on the rotary attachment um, that hopefully are obvious here with the picture is that you'll notice here that the value uh, of the upper quadrant is minus 5.184. Okay, that would be half of the 10.36 or it is a bit of a rounding uh, error there, but that's pretty well half of the 10.4 that I'm using. And you'll notice that you've got the positive value of 5.184 down here. So those two added together are going to give you basically the circumference of the glass. So instead of seeing a page size that is is 10.4, we're seeing something that's uh, uh, half of it is positive and half of it's negative, and they're both using the same numbers. You'll also notice that when I do select an image, I do have the values here. I've got the X value, which is, we've already been talking about is 20.777. Um, but our Y value is 5.184, which is the bottom of the page, because I'm working from the middle. So make sure that your anchor point isn't saying, isn't a top left or a bottom right, uh, because you can see the Y values change. If I click on the middle value here, you'll notice that it's measuring from the middle. And I know that if I select this this logo right here, the Y value is zero. And that's the way that it should be because this red line that's going through here is always measuring the zero point uh, of the actual uh, location of that logo based on the red dot pointer in the machine. Okay, so that's really important to sort of to to sort of understand that because that's basically how the the rotary attachment works. The um, the other thing is there is a, a lock object uh, button here. Um, I will talk about that in a future video uh, about how to use the lock function. Uh, but for now, we're we're not going to worry about that. Uh, as I mentioned before, if we wanted the 3D on, we could just click on the 3D and that will give us the position of that logo on an imaginary glass. That concludes the video on how to use the rotary attachment in Ruby part one. I will be doing a couple of other videos in the next week or two. Uh, both of them will be on Yeti mugs, one with a handle, one without a handle, um, and probably I'll touch on how to use the lock function in the rotary attachment also. So if you haven't so done so, please subscribe. If you like the video, click the like button. 
hopefully the next videos will be as informative as hopefully this one has been for you.